Друзі, вітаю на каналі Верба. It is Nika with you and today we were supposed to have a completely different video. But considering what has been happening in Ukraine lately, I just cannot omit this topic. Uh, within just a few days, March 21st, 2nd and 4th, Russia sent around 240 air assault mines to Ukraine. Among them are missiles and drones of different types. These pictures illustrate how many of them were hit by our air defense. But unfortunately, it's impossible to hit all of them. So some of them, unfortunately, reached their goals. And also, even if they were hit, they still could bring a lot of destruction. Many residential buildings were destroyed. People got hurt and many died. On the night of March 22nd, Russians mostly concentrated on the Ukrainian energy system. Here you can see a shell hit map and basically it is the biggest attack to our energy system from the very beginning of the full-scale invasion. But the most horrible is the fact that they hit the biggest Ukrainian hydroelectric station in Zaporizhia and it caused some serious destruction. Many Ukrainian regions now are experiencing global blackouts. And the scenario was really close to the catastrophe of the previous spring when Russians destroyed Kachovka Hydra Electric Station. The scale of terror that Russia commits in Ukraine is enormous. But you know what? It seems to me that the world has started forgetting a bit that there is actually a war in Ukraine that Russia keeps attacking Ukrainian civilians and that every day, for already two years and one month, Ukrainians keep living in conditions that were hard even to imagine like three years ago. Imagine the situation. You are sleeping in your bed, seeing already the fifth dream. And then you hear a loud siren somewhere around 3 a.m., the time of the deepest sleep and the orc's favorite time. Air alarm, missiles and drones from Russia are already flying towards you with only one goal – to kill you. Just because of who you are. Just for being a Ukrainian. And if you want to be safe, you have to get up, take all your family, including your pets, and rush to a bomb shelter. Because if you are lucky, the missiles could be flying to you for around 30-40 minutes. But if it's, for example, a missile called Kinjal, you have only around 10 minutes. Because those bitches are fast. Oh yeah, and sometimes they are even hard to track. And the air alarm could be turned on after the hit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the reality. And I don't even start describing how it is on the east of Ukraine, for example, in Kharkiv, where the distance to the front is so small that missiles really often hit before the alarm. And so you spend the rest of the night in that shelter, hoping that no one from your relatives and friends will be hurt and that your home will survive the attack and you will have a place to return to. And so then you come back, have your morning coffee and go to work. Because war or not war, you need to eat, to pay your bills and to live your life. Because like nobody else now, we know how short it can be and how important it is to enjoy every day that we have left, despite anything. We also understand that we need to work and pay taxes to support our economy because it is our country and it starts with us. We also need to donate every month to help our friends in the armed forces who protect us risking their own lives and health 
or to support people who live in the hottest spots of Ukraine and do not have the opportunity to leave it. We also have to deal with our fears, stress and PTSD. Because we are at war and most of us have seen things that can destroy any psychics. Of course, our nervous system is already getting used to the new reality, because without such adaptation it would be simply impossible to exist. But it doesn't mean that it is normal, and the fatigue is rising every day. And probably that is why you don't hear about it from Ukrainians every day anymore, like it was in the beginning of the war. And when I hear the phrase, oh, we're already tired from news from Ukraine, I just want to say, well, imagine then how tired we are. But we just cannot give up, so we keep fighting, and yes, we need your help. We already live in this reality, and it is hard for us to tell uh, about it to the world every day. So, we ask you to stay aware, to remember about what is happening in Ukraine, what Russia does to Ukraine, to read the news, to listen to usual Ukrainians about their life, to participate in fundraisings, to go to protests, to support the Ukrainian language and culture, and to cancel everything Russian. Yes, this is what works the best against the aggressor, and this is how you can help. And oh, please, don't even start the polemics with phrases from the Russian propaganda methodology, like, oh, everything is not so simple. Or, it's just politics, usual Russian people have nothing to do with it, they are your brothers. Because, friends, today I have some good answers for you that I want to show you. So, a little prehistory. Last week I published this real and short and it was a usual video where I was showing you some different kitchen-related objects and asked you to name them, and then said the names myself. For some reason, the Instagram reel became kind of viral, which is actually really cool, but for some reason it happened that it got into the recommendations to Russian audience. And here they showed all their true faces in the comments. So better grab some coffee and let's enjoy this wonderful comedy together. 99% of them for sure showed the highest level of the great Russian culture. Can't you see how highly educated and well-mannered these people are? They surely comment on the video they accidentally saw on the internet with such a positive approach and such a respect, aren't they? Mm, such lovely people. The majority of them tried to highlight that the Ukrainian language doesn't exist at all, or that it is just an ugly, spoiled form of Russian or Russian dialect, and that it sounds awful. Some were really outraged that many words sound alike, so they are of course borrowed from Russian. And honestly, this is very funny. At the same time, others were really mad about a couple of words that do not sound like Russian at all, so they call them as borrowed from the evil vest. Some especially educated comrades even tried to teach me some Ukrainian. For example, that sklyanka is actually not a glass, but a bottle. Oh, the poor word pliashka is just crying somewhere in the corner. And I won't even comment the number of mistakes they make in their own comments written in Russian. The fact that the Ukrainian language is 
taught and studied as a foreign language drive these people so crazy that a tiny innocent video with some cutlery vocabulary in Ukrainian seems to burst the dam that was holding rivers of their and if someone thinks that this is the way they think about only Ukraine and Ukrainians, you're wrong. A similar mindset they will have for any country that doesn't lick Russia. Russists hate everyone around. God, they even hate each other. I mean, just look at this lovely conversation between themselves. They are so full of poison inside that they just can't help but spread it around. Here are those real average Russians, whom so many people in the West tolerate and protect. Here are their real voices. And one day they will say the same to you. And I don't even talk about the huge amount of comments that were written just to offend me. But I actually only may thank them for a great activity on my Instagram, but mostly for precious content that I may share with my subscribers to show them the real Russian culture. I hope no one anymore thinks that usual Russians have nothing to do with the war. And I would say that this comment is the quintessence of what I was trying to tell by this video. I actually will leave the link to the reel in Instagram in the comments, so you can read it all yourself if you want to. There are a lot of them. Or better just subscribe to me on Instagram and let's learn Ukrainian together. Summing it all up, we see that the whole Russian nation is fighting against Ukraine on all levels. And on the level of language and culture, you and me have a great mission to save and to develop Ukrainian heritage for the future. And I'm really thankful for your help with it. Every one of you who keeps Ukraine in your heart helps us to accomplish this mission. So, щиро дякую вам. But if after this video you feel angry enough and feel like actually doing something, except for spreading the information about the war, of course, I invite you to take part in a very important fundraising for the training of strike drone pilots. This fundraising is organized by Serhii Pritulas Fund. You can donate any amount to my PayPal and I will send the money to the fundraising. Or you may send your donation directly to the fund. All the links are in the video description. Such little steps will help us to reach the victory. Thanks a lot for watching it. Please like this video and share it. Stay aware about the war, learn Ukrainian and take part in the fundraisings. Slava Ukraini! Heroem Slava!